This week, another miracle in the garden. Plus, we're gonna be planting out some pollinators and I've got a special tip for you beginner gardeners out there. It will save you some money the next time that you go to buy seedlings. So first things first, let me tell you about the miracle. To start with, this has been the most difficult summer since I moved to South Texas to grow anything in this garden. I mean, it's been well over 100 degrees every single day for the last four months. It has just been brutally hot and that can be really discouraging. The first tip I have for this video is don't give up, especially if you're a beginner gardener. Don't give up. There's always a way. And I want to be honest with you, I was close this week and I'm going to show you why. A week ago we planted out our tomato plants out here, going to grow them up a single string. I came out this week and this is what I found. Oh no. It's not good, guys. Heartbreaking, right? Absolutely. I knew this was a wilting disease. I knew it wasn't watering because the beds have soaker hoses. Fusarium wilt, verticillium wilt, something. But the hybrids that I chose to grow here are bred to resist these wilting diseases. So I thought, look, you know, I've got one more thing left in my arsenal. If this, I see this again, I'm going to attack it. So two nights ago, I came out and I saw another plant. The tip of it was drooping over. And I thought, here we go again. What I did was I said, no, I'm not going to accept this. I made up a batch of compost tea. And the recipe is either right here or right there. I don't know where yet because I haven't edited this video, but it's going to be up there somewhere. That batch of compost tea takes 24 hours to make so that I knew, I knew that it was gonna get worse. But my intent was at least add some microbes to the soil, get it a little bit more healthy. Maybe it will protect the rest of these plants. And I made that and last night I came out and I did a soil drench on these beds that are right here on my left, which means I poured about half of this compost tea into the beds where the tomatoes were and about half into the bed where the cucumbers are behind me. And I came out this morning and this is what I found. Last night at seven o'clock, this plant was drooped over maybe 30%. I mean, all the leaves drooped over and curled up just 13 hours ago. I did the soil drench, put two and a half gallons through this whole bed. And this morning, 90% of it has recovered. Now, the very tip has not recovered yet, and maybe it won't, and that's okay with me, because the valuable lesson I learned here was this compost tea has got to become a regular part of my garden on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. It just has to. I mean, this year already eliminated my problem with cucumber beetles, one of my cucumber beds. I struggled for four years with cucumber beetles in this garden. Ever since I started using compost tea, they're gone. I think that's because the molasses is the main ingredient with the compost in this compost tea, and cucumber beetles don't like molasses. And maybe that's the reason. Nonetheless, they are gone. And this is a problem solved. What a relief. Root knot nematode. Root knot nematode destroys all of your plants in your bed. Ever since I started using the compost tea on my raised beds, no more root knot nematode. And now, this wilting disease, I am absolutely a believer now in this compost tea. So there it is again, or there. If you haven't seen the video, give it a look. It's an easy thing to do. There's a little bit of investment involved, $50 or so for your a good air pump. But I am an absolute believer. This is something we should all be doing in our gardens. Have a look, do your own research, but I'm convinced. Are you girls ready to make a video? All right. I have two tips for the beginner gardener today. 
I mean, think about that. Let's start with tip number one, and then I'll show you tip number two. We're gonna plant these pollinator attracting flowers in my garden today underneath my cucumber plants. I'll do one here, I'll do one on the other end of the bed, but here's a tip for you. Other than doing your research on pollinator attracting flowers, which you should do, Google it, talk to other gardeners in your area. If you find yourself in a big box store, go wander through all of the flowers in that big box store gardening center and look for the bees. I do this every time I'm in Home Depot, I'm in Lowe's, I'm at a nursery. I just walk through all the flowers and I'm looking where are the bumblebees? Where are the honeybees? Yesterday I was in Lowe's, I had to go get some duct tape. And of course I made a beeline for the garden center. It was very early in the day, there was nobody there. And I'm just looking at the sea of flowers here in South Texas and the bees were all over these plants. And I thought, hey, there are the pollinator flowers I'm gonna buy today. These are, cannot pronounce it very well, Blue Days Evolvulus. It's an annual plant, so if your temperature gets below freezing, it will die. Um, we do sometimes get below freezing, so this may not make it, but it's a $5 investment. Tip number one for you new gardeners, if you're in a big box store or a nursery and you're looking at the flowers, where are the bees? That's the plant you want. Sun's starting to come out. It's gonna be hot again today, but good news is if the weather forecast is correct, we might actually get as low as the mid 90s this week coming up. So I needed to replace a couple of these tomato plants that died from our wilting disease. So I went to the big box store yesterday, and here's another tip for you. If you have to buy seedlings, always look for seedlings with two growing points coming out of the container. This is basically getting your seedlings at half price, because all you need to do now is just separate these seedlings and plant them separately. The plants are pretty tough and they're going to be able to survive this, but all you want to do is just split it just like this. This $4 tomato seedling now has just been reduced to $2. Let's go ahead and put them in. Easy as that. Let's do one more. And there we go. Tip number two for you beginner gardeners. If you're going to buy seedlings, look for seedlings that have two growing tips growing out of them, out of the soil buy those because when you get those home you can separate those and your plants were just cut by 50 percent at least the price was hey guys have a great week see you next weekend